It's springtime here in Dallas, Texas, Zone 8A, and I'm looking forward to harvesting great vegetables from my garden beds. So let's go take a look at what I'm expecting to be able to harvest for the table and for preserving for later use. I'm Janet, and this is Janet's Kitchen Garden. We're in the eastern garden area of the backyard, and as you can see, I garden mostly in raised beds. These beds are either eight foot or 16 foot long, made out of rough cedar. Bill and I built them all. Use gloves when you work with rough cedar or you'll get splinters. The 16 footer and this eight footer are completely enclosed with a hardware cloth. This is a galvanized wire mesh with a half inch opening. Now, back in October of 2019, we had a really bad tornado that tore through the neighborhood. And there was another bed here, and the tornado picked that bed up and threw it down the alley and up into trees. So what the tornado actually did is that it allowed me to re-envision this space and redesign. And because of the tornado, I lost about 80% oh, of my foliage coverage from all the live oaks in this yard. So all of a sudden I had all this sun, so I could really add a lot more into this area. So I, what my concept was, was to create basically a fo uh, forest floor. And what that is, is that organic matter falls to the ground and the worms and the insects break it down into usable soil. So that's what I started here, is that I laid cardboard boxes on top of the St. Augustine, on top of that 14 inches of bark mulch, and I'll continue to add layers as the worms start to break this organic matter down. Now I did have to buy the bark mulch and I bought it from a company called Soil Solutions. I'll have a link below to them for you local guys. I used their garden soil to fill my rosemary bed out front. Really like their product, high quality. It is what they claim it to be, and I like that. And they have, oh, probably three different grades of bark mulch. This is the rough chop, which is pretty fine for a rough chop. So my ultimate goal in this area is just to be able to dig a hole and plant a fruit tree. I hope to be able to put, oh, about eight to 10 semi and dwarf fruit trees in this area. Now I would like to talk to you about the hoop bed. Bill and I built this hoop frame cover over this bed in the fall and we did a double frame so that we were able to cover each frame individually with a 10 mil plastic. That created a cold frame on this bed, which kept the interior constant temperature at about 60, 64 degrees. We grew and harvested lettuce and spinach and carrots and beets. And that we were able to do that all the way up until the week long freeze that we had. We had single digit weather, six inches of snow and minus wind chill factors. The coldest it's ever been in Texas that I've experienced. So let's look inside the bed now. So inside the bed, what we, it still remains from fall planting, some of the garlic and shallots right here, the bunching onions, and then the leeks. There are a couple of the carrots, you can see they look kind of, kind of scraggly. Those are left over that, uh, from fall planting that got kind of bit from the freeze. What I did want to talk about in here are the peppers right here. These are an orange sweet pepper. And what I do to peppers is that I pinch the center out of them, which is called topping. And the reason I do that is to create a bushy plant. When you top a plant like that, it sends a message to the root that says, oh my gosh, something's happened. I better send out more branches. So the roots, will send out more shoots and more branches and stems, and which results in a bushier 
tighter plant and more fruit set. The other interesting plant in this bed is this little plant right here. Those are two or three per clump. This leaf looks like a lavender leaf. The bloom is a purple spiked bloom, just like a lavender, but it's oregano. It's called lavender oregano. Smells like oregano. Hmm. Tastes like oregano. So I'm very excited. This is a new plant for me. I've never grown it. So I'm really excited to see how it grows, how it blooms, and how it cooks up. So let's move on to a different bed. One thing that I didn't mention is that I number all of my beds. And the reason I number the beds is that it makes it easier to me, for me to keep track of it in my gardening journal. So this is bed number two. Number three is the hoop bed, four is the smaller covered, and number one is behind camera. This 16 foot long bed is a great example of how I like to garden. There's every kind of vegetable and herb and flower that I love planted in here. And what that does is that it creates a micro environment so it will pull in multiple different pollinators that go to diff that are drawn to different plants. It also pulls in the insect predators, the wasps, the ladybugs, the, the geckos. So there within this bed, there's four different varieties of carrots, there's five different varieties of lettuce, three varieties of basil, there's bachelor buttons, snapdragons, uh, coreopsis, uh, every cosmos, everything is planted in and together. And the other thing that's important, oh, there's bush beans too. The other thing to know is that in my style of gardening, as soon as I harvest something, that space that's vacated immediately gets planted with something else. Uh, not the same plant, but a different, a different variety, whether it's an herb, a flower, or a vegetable. So you just keep on filling up that space and maintaining that varied environment. One of the things that's interesting that I wanted to talk about real quick uh, in the construction is when Bill and I were building this bed, I said, gosh, you know what would be really cool is if we had some Dutch doors. And the reason we wanted, I wanted Dutch doors is that it would allow freer access for my birds, my butterflies, my bees, my predators. So Bill being Bill, he said, sure, I can do that for you. So we have four Dutch doors, two on each side, plus two full doors. The other thing that's wonderful are these barrel vaults. When we were designing the bed, I told Bill, I really don't want another peaked roof. The old bed had a peaked roof and I'm over that. I want something softer. How about a barrel vault? And again, Bill loves to work with wood. He loves a challenge. So he said, sure, I'll, I'll figure that out. I'll make those for you. So we also will have a video that we'll post of his construction, his design of the barrel vaults and execution, which should be really interesting. So that'll come later. He's still editing that. So within this bed also is a really great plant I've never grown before is celery and I'm really enjoying growing that. I did not grow that from seed. I got those as tiny little plants from my garden center, North Haven, which is just a block from the house. I'll put their link below too. It's a wonderful garden center, very knowledgeable people, very friendly. I love the place. So moving down the bed here, you it's a little sparse down on this end because I had things planted in here that have been harvested and have been replanted. We've got more bush beans, more lettuce, more carrots, and again, a continuation of the, uh, the tomatoes. On the tomatoes, there's several different varieties in here. We have a Rose de Berne, which is a French heirloom. We have a Soldaki. We have some sun glows, uh, then we have an orange pear, then we have uh, Dr. Welch's orange is right here, and then two San Marzanos. So that's bed number two. Let's move over to bed four. 
Okay, we're in bed number four now. And again, what we've got uh, happening is a little micro community here of plants, flowers, herbs. There's lettuce and uh, this is a Parisian basil. We have snapdragons and coreopsis and a couple of different types of bush beans in here, plus our red bell onions. Uh, Tomato-wise, uh, we have two Italian heritage on this end, the Pantano Romanesco. We have a, a woods famous brimmer, a zebra, the, red, the green zebra. And then down at that end, two grape tomatoes, the pink bumblebee and Brad's atomic grape tomato. Uh, one of the things that I want to, well, there's two things that I want to focus on in this bed and one of them is the, the carrots that are being grown right here. And they're called a Parisian carrot. And what's really interesting about these is that the seed itself looks like little white pearls. It's just not like any other carrot seed that I've seen that I can remember. This carrot is a 19th century French heirloom and I love that I think that's pretty pretty exciting and it's planted at this end and also a square foot of it on that end the other thing that I want to show you a uh, product that I think is really fascinating are tomato clips this is the little clip they're called tomato clips and what happens is that when you push them together the two ends together this little V is what grips the twine. And then you just put it around the stalk of the tomato and snap it, and it's reusable. So I'm gonna go down and clip this one on here at the bottom, there. And that holds the tomato to the twine. So this is bed number one. And this front piece that's removable is recycled from the old bed number two that the tornado took away. I grabbed this, pulled this out of a tree. You can see how it's been mangled and bent all up. That was from the tornado, but it was still usable, so I recycled it for the garden. So let me move this over here. And I have this in front of the garden to keep the bunnies out. So in this garden, uh, bed we have kale and parsley and chives and chard and carrots and a couple different types of lettuce the carrot is one of my favorite it's used back it's a yellow or a golden they only get about that long but they're really thick and they're really really sweet I like them a lot there's also some leeks and I just the other day just planted some red tongue bush beans in here. There's also uh, second and third plantings of carrots and lettuce in here. Now in this cage I've got a Tondo heirloom, uh, Italian heirloom squash and for the first time what I'm going to do I need to put a stake in here. I'm going to train the squash. This is a semi upright bush and I'm going to train it to a center stake and so I can grow it vertically because you know squash, squash just goes everywhere it takes up too much room so I'm going to try vertically letting the cage help support some of the leaves I'm doing the same thing here on this melon which is a lemon drop melon which is a, another new heirloom that I'm going to try thank you very much Baker Rare Seed Thanks again for watching the video. If you liked it, please think about hitting the subscribe button. That helps me a lot. Give me a thumbs up. That's a big help too. And if you'd like future notification when I upload a new video, ring the bell. Again, thanks so much. Check out the links below for the products that I mentioned and the suppliers. And this is Janet from Janet's Kitchen Garden saying see you later.